Whether you are a seasoned pro at the command line or you're just starting out and trying to figure out how all of it works, I have a relatively high degree of confidence that you're going to find at least one of these command line tips helpful. So the very first one is probably the most basic one out of all of these, and all of these are going to be relatively pretty simple, but they're stuff that I actually use every day. But the first one is just navigating with CD. So if you need to go, you can see I'm in my sidebar app file. If I just need to go back a directory, you can see I'm now in the documents directory. So I went backwards. One folder is what I did. Now, one other command line tip here is the ls command. So I'm in the documents directory, but how do I know what's in this directory? Well, I can type in ls and then enter, and then I can see all of the different files within my documents directory. And you can see I have quite a few files. But now, what if I want to go back into my sidebar tutorial folder? Well, I can just cd, and then I can do sidebar and one other tip. So tip number three here is using the tab to complete. So I've typed out, let's just type out side B, but then if I hit tab, what you're going to see is it auto completes to sidebar. But what if I don't want to enter sidebar? I want to enter sidebar hyphen app. Well, I can just add a hyphen and then tab again. And then I can enter sidebar app. Now you can also clear your command line. I didn't actually think of that as a tip, but here within my Mac OS system here, if I type in clear, it will clear my command line. So we've covered CD where we can go back a directory. So I can go back to my document by going CD dot dot. But then if I want to CD back into sidebar, I can do CD sidebar hyphen autocomplete into app and then press return. And then I enter sidebar app. Now we covered LS, but LS won't include maybe all the information that you want. So you can also do LS hyphen LA. And when you do that, you're going to be able to see the dot files. So you can see, I see dot to get dot get ignore dot next. And I don't see those files when I just do LS. So if you type LS and you feel like, Hey, I'm, I'm not seeing the files I want to actually see here. Well, try doing LS hyphen LA, and that will allow you to be able to see the dot files within that directory. Now you can also see the read write permissions here over on the left, which can sometimes be helpful as well. Now taking a step backwards, what if you just did like a CD command and you typed in like a complex file path? And just so you know, this can be like a, a more complex file path so to where I can go. I want to CD into my app folder right here, and then I can do forward slash. Then I hit tab so I can see all the files within my app folder. Then what if I want to go into my dashboard folder and I just want to enter there. So now I've gone into my dashboard, but let's say, okay, I didn't want to be in my dashboard. I want to go back out into sidebar app and I just cleared my terminal, but I'm back here in sidebar app. And then what if I, so let's CD back into app. Well, what if I just want to run my previous command? Well, you can run CD hyphen, and that will take us back to sidebar app. And if I want to go back to CD into app, I can do CD hyphen, and that takes us back into app because CD hyphen just runs our previous command. So if you're like going back and forth between commands, you can do CD hyphen, and that can also work. Now, what if I want to go to my root directory? Well, I can just do CD tilde. And that will take me to the root of my directory here. Now, I don't actually want to be there. So I'm going to kind of cheat here and just open a new terminal. So I'm back in my sidebar app directory. But CD tilde will take you back in the root directory. But this time around, let's do ls-la. But what if you need to access a file quickly and just make like a quick edit on that file, but maybe you don't want to open it up in your code editor. Well, this is where you can use a vim. So here I can do V I M and then I'm going to open the readme. So I'm going to type read 
and then press tab. So it auto completes. I'm going to enter my readme file. So this basically just shows me the contents of my readme file within this like Vim text editor here. Now Vim can be a little bit tricky. And right now you're, you're basically in like view only mode. But if I press I, you can see this changes down here to insert mode. This is where I can actually make an edit to this file. So you can see this is learn mo. I'm going to say learn more, all capitals. But now to save this, I first need to press escape to exit insert mode. And then I need to do colon WQ for right quit, I believe is what that stands for. If you just did colon Q, you're not going to actually save your changes. So I'm going to do WQ and then I'm back out. Now, I'll often use Vim if I need to do just like a simple edit like that. And that is basically the extent of my, my Vim knowledge. I can get around a little bit and sometimes it can come in really handy to where I don't need to like open up a new folder in my editor and stuff like that. I can just Vim into it real quick, make a change and I'm good to go. Another pretty cool one here is what if in this readme file, I want to search for like some text in the readme file, but I also don't want to open up my readme file. Well, this is where I can do grep and then I can search for text. So I'm going to search for the, and then I'm going to type in what file I want to search for this text or the path I want to search for. So here I'm going to do read and then I did tab complete again and now enter. And when I do this, you can see it shows me every line within my readme file that contains the. So first run the development server, see the result, the page auto completes. And this can be really helpful if you're like in a certain file somewhere, you have like text that represents a command you need to run to set up your system, but you keep forgetting that command. Well, you can just grep that file name and see the contents of whatever you search for with that grep command. So if I like search grep dev in my readme file, you can see to run the development server, I need to npm run dev, yard dev, pmb dev, or bun dev. So maybe I forgot how to run my development server. I mean, you're probably not going to forget that because you're doing it so much. But that's an example of where this can be really useful if you're in a pinch. Now, one of my favorite features of the command line that I learned from a seasoned pro is how to search through previous commands that you did. So say you did that grep command, but then you like forgot what command you ran and then you have to go to Google and search like, how do I, how do I search for files? Well, Sometimes it can be easy to just search through previous commands. So say you forgot the keyword was grep, but you remember you searched for dev. Well, I could do, if I do control R, you can see I've entered this like command line search mode. And then I'm just going to search for dev. And you can see the command that kind of is suggested for me is grep dev. And then I can just hit return and it's automatically going to run that command for me. So I know in my professional application, we have a command to load fixtures, fixtures into our database. And I always forget the entire command. So it's super helpful for me to just like control R and then I can just search for migrate. And here you can see MPX Prisma migrate dev. This is a previous command I must have run once, but like I'm probably not going to better th remember this MPX Prisma dev dash dash name command right off the top of my head. But if I'm able to search through previous commands and I just remember like one word of it, then it automatically pulls this command here and I just arrowed over to the right and I can maybe change the name and then run this command again. So that is super useful. Now you can also just type history, history, and you can see a history of some of your previously run commands. So you can see like git status, git commit, my grep commands that we ran, ls, la, and we can see history of some of those recent commands. So if you kind of forgot the commands that you ran, you can type in history and see your history of them. I think that alongside control R and searching for commands has saved me so much time. Now, 
The last one that we're going to go over, and I think I've covered like 10-ish tips here. So I don't think my, uh, my title of this video should be too far off. But the last one is just arrowing through your commands. So when I first started out, I didn't understand this. And I didn't know it was a thing, but it saves so much time. So like, say I run git status and I check my status and, you know, later on I do some stuff and then I realize that I need to like run my git status command again. I would always just retype everything out and run it again, but you don't need to do that. You can just hit the up arrow and that automatically pulls up my last command. And if I keep up arrowing, it just up arrows through all of my previous history of my commands. So this can be also really useful. And I use this most of the time when I like forget the exact command that I did. But sometimes like I ran a migrate command a very long time ago. Like you can see, I'm not seeing my migrate command in any of these. And you could be up arrowing for days. And I'm down arrowing here as well to just like scroll through my history with up arrow and down arrow. But this is where you could use like control R, search for that migrate command, and then you have it pulled up. So I like using the combination of up arrow and down arrow as well as that migrate command. Now, also, if you just know that you want to run the previous command, you can actually do explanation point, explanation point, and that runs the previous command. So you can see that just ran git status again because that was the last command I did. Explanation, explanation point, and it continuously runs the previous command. So to recoup these real quick, cd dot dot is going to take you back to the previous directory you can also cd into other directories so cd sidebar app and then also if we do ls we can see our files within that directory ls dash la to see not la la ls dash la to see the read write permissions as well as the dot files and then we can also use tab for autocomplete so if i want to cd into public i can write pub tab and then tab into public file, and then I can cd dot dot back in my sidebar app. We can also vim into files to change them quick. So vim, and then the file name, so into my readme file, and then I'm gonna do colon q to get out of there. cd tilde is gonna take us to our root directory, and I'm gonna open up a new folder to get back into sidebar, and then we can do cd hyphen, which is going to run our previous navigation command which was back into sidebar app which is why we didn't really go anywhere there and then you can also grep for certain text within a file and then see that outputted within your terminal you can use clear to clear your terminal you can use control r to search for previous commands and see those come up right away you can use history to see your previous commands you can use up arrows and down arrows to navigate through previous commands. And you can use explanation, explanation to run your previous command that you did. So those are some essential commands that I use on a super regular basis. Hopefully you found at least a couple of those helpful and they make your development process much quicker. So thanks for tuning into this. I'll see you in the next one.